Reputation. I would say that reputation is something that is earned over time for most YouTube channels. I mean, it was like, I know we don't have the best reputation, but I hope our reputation is at least these guys are real with their reactions and their commentary. And I hope that that pans out. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, reputation, once again, I think about all these things. I think about all that we've said, all that we've done, all we've tried to do. And our reputation... In some regards, I think, could be improved upon, but I still think, for the most part, we're a fairly, like, we have a fairly decent reputation. I like people who like us. I like people who like our content. Yeah. Stuff like that. But, yeah. According to uh, this one, though, Sunny V2, who has the best reputation in YouTube history? I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see, but... Only way we're going to find out is by giving it a whirl, shall we? We shall. Here we go. These creators have the 10 most flawless reputations in YouTube history, and coming in at number 10 is professional eater Matt Stoney. Oh, yeah. With 16 million subscribers, 3.5 billion views, and over 13 years on the platform, Matt Stoney has had plenty of chances to land himself in controversy, although despite scouring every corner of the internet, it seems this man has never even been criticized. His clean image has resulted in collaborations with everybody from the Try Guys to GQ, as well as someone who deserves an hey, honorable mention. Beard? For this video, Beard Meets Food. Beard meets food. Hell yeah. These creators showing that living a simple, humble life outside of YouTube can do wonders for your online reputation. You might make the argument that competitive eating is simply an uncontroversial genre. However, I'd urge you to think of a different YouTuber who instantly uh, proves this theory wrong. Yeah. Mika Kato makes Matt Stoney look flawless by every comparison, yet neither of these guys look as perfect as the report of the week, who reinforces that food and good reputations almost always go hand in hand. Hand. The report of the week's reputation is difficult to describe, but very easy to feel. He's simply a YouTube legend. With over 12 years of suited food reviews, it's no surprise that the two top comments on his first video read, this guy's character is very consistent, time proved it, and I love how unique he is. His clothing and video style are both extremely distinctive, bound by a humble, wholesome personality and a respectable life philosophy. What I always try to advocate onto others is to treat others with kindness, respect, respect and dignity. That's what I always try to do every single day, and I know I'm not perfect. When he made a classic yeah. I react to your mean comments video, <laughs> his biggest difficulty was actually finding any mean comments. I was trying to find some comments that really stuck out to me to include in this video, and I was surprised. It was a lot more of a massive undertaking, should I say, than I expected. After which he reinforced <laughs> his good nature. Hate isn't anything. You know, it's not a good thing. I always say everyone should treat each other with respect, kindness, and dignity. With his no-hatred policy resulting in nobody hating him. This mm. is the man I'll show my children when I teach them dignity. There is something about this guy which makes you believe in humanity again. I will physically defend this man for my whole life. The countless different review bra memes only add to his charm, <laughs> yet they shouldn't distract you from a high level of personal accountability. And, and this was on me. I should I should mention that. It was just a mistake on my part. Yet if you want accountability that with a bit like more a style, dude. then we have to talk about a channel called Discover Connection. At around 600,000 oh subscribers, Discover Connection is the smallest channel on this list. However, these guys have some of the most wholesome content you will ever watch. The channel was created with the goal of reducing divisiveness, with the members essentially leaving their comfort zone in every video. Just I'm gonna say, it sounds good to me. You know, making people forget about the things that are so make everyone so divisive to do nice things for random people. In their Helping Strangers with Anything and Everything video, they walked around the streets of Vancouver helping complete strangers with their gardening, while in a different video, they managed to convince 30 random people at the beach to have a sleepover party at their house. <laughs> their most viral video Damn. is an episode where they went around to random houses, offering to cook people dinner in their own homes, with one of the people they cooked for then showing up in a later episode where they hosted a massive free Christmas dinner for 50 strangers who were all alone on Christmas. Mm. The channel is well summarized by a comment reading, I'm not crying, you're crying. This is some next level wholesomeness, guys. Thank you for being able to witness this. Although until they've experienced the trials of being a bigger channel, Casey Neistat definitely deserves the next highest spot. Uh. While Casey has found himself in the occasional controversy. Yeah, 
Casey, I've had a love and hate. Like, like I've loved his vlog stuff and everything. But at the same time, it's like, as I've gotten older, I see the, the issues with it. And it's like, oh. Eh. I guess it could be worse. You'd be hard pressed to find a single person who doesn't think he's a legend. Casey is one of the few rare YouTubers who pioneered a whole new genre, during which he displayed an unwavering work ethic by uploading a high quality vlog every 24 hours for 800 days straight. The only time I really get bummed out or depressed is when I'm not being productive, is when I'm not accomplishing or doing or contributing in any way. While this might have almost ended his marriage, the destructiveness of that on my own marriage and relationship was mm -hmm. profound. These kind of missions only provide another reason to love him. Transparency. While most YouTubers show only a polished version of their lives, Casey's unafraid of highlighting his darkest moments, which almost always provides a counterintuitive boost to a YouTuber's image. On top of this, vlogging is simply the perfect video type to build a strong connection with the audience, which when combined with his various on-screen oh, collaborations, man. show that he's the type of guy who could be friends with anyone. Casey doesn't put himself on a pedestal simply because he's famous, which is a quality also <laughs> His name, but I just never really zero. watched him a whole lot. Oh, Casey Neistat? Yeah. Well, his vlog series, he kept it going for over 800 days. Literally a new, like, high-quality vlog every day for 800 days. Hmm. Impre it was very impressive. Man's a talented filmmaker, no doubt about it. It's just some of his execution, I'm just like, eh, could have been handled better. I definitely agree with Charlie. Deserving to be on here, though. Charlie's the man. No doubt. Can't think of anybody who doesn't like him. When you hear the name Moist Critical, two words come to mind. Consistency and reliability. Yes. His streams and almost two daily videos make his social media presence inescapable, but in a good way that'll always leave you updated on all the current drama. In the early days of his channel, Charlie actually donated the entirety of his YouTube earnings to charity, which he continued for over four and a half years before noticing that his donations weren't actually going to those in need. And if you do a little bit of digging, you will find out that many of these highly rated charities are actually actually just awful. Despite having discontinued the practice, Charlie hasn't stopped giving back to others, and while his laid-back attitude makes it seem like the process is pretty damn simple, he embodies the saying that it takes a lot of effort to look effortless. Steve Wallace is another smallish channel on this list at and around 1.3 million. also just a million. expert wordsmith, that's why I've always yes. watched him. <laughs> Man's good at what he, he does. Just string sentences together is art. <laughs> subs. However, I'd be willing to admit that this man has never even had a hate comment during his 12 years on YouTube. Steve gained popularity by talking about all things camping. However, he blew up with his stealth camping videos in which he sleeps in unusual places like behind a police station, inside a stormwater drain, and even in the bushes of a roundabout. Yeah, I've seen some by of this comment reading, It's a bit ballsy to just camp out behind the police station. I feel like they're going to get mad at you if they find you. And he doesn't if they find them. you. Steve is extremely... going to say, his whole thing is he like gets a like one thing he did was he winterized the back of his truck. So basically, uh, he turned his car, his truck off. He turned on the heater back there, and it basically was like a little live-in like a uh, little place in his basement. Hmm. It's actually really cool. Hell yeah! Extremely open and honest. On <laughs> Stop it. Huh. <sighs> Sorry. Nate's fuel <laughs> tanks running low. He's, I'm very tired. He's, he's hey, you told us you weren't tired now. before we started this, but now I'm seeing you are. <laughs> Hold on. This will wake me up. No. <laughs> Don't do that. There we go. Now I'm awake. Ugh. <sighs> on his channel, which would bring him closer to the if we're audience. we're gonna hurt you to wake you up, you just want to install a little well, shock button on the seat of your chair that I can press <laughs> <over here. laughs> but then that, But then that takes me out of control. What of what? Of me keeping myself awake. But I can keep you awake. I don't want you to keep me awake. <laughs> if I Not if I'm to... doing it that way. I anyways. thought you meant no, that no. you should have one. No, no. <laughs> Okay, it'd be like me. It'd be like me. Be like, hey, wake up. <laughs> With a fucking air horn in your I'd... ear every morning. Yeah. No. Exactly. I can get up out of bed. <laughs> it's you. I can too. Sometimes. No. Every time you need me to be up out of bed, I'm out of bed. I'm the one that can't get up out of bed. That's, it's him, yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
I need like a button that I can press when my alarm goes off that'll make my bed go <laughs> like just throw me out the floor. Community post celebrating he and his wife's fifth anniversary before uploading a video exactly three weeks later Aww. announcing that she'd passed away in her sleep. On Saturday, beautiful wife and I went to bed. On Sunday only I woke up. For obvious reasons, this unexplainably difficult event made the videos much harder to make. Not gonna lie, I've been crying a little um, in between shots. Uh, being honest, things have been tough. With the impact also showing up in a YouTube post reading, Hey, sorry to keep letting you down with missing regular uploads. I may be at the stages of grief when I've got to depression. Some days are okay, some are sleeping all day and hiding from the world. I don't want to burden you with my problems, but I want to let you know what's going on, which was then followed by yet another tragic announcement. Announcement. Hey everyone, sorry I've been absent. It has been a tough month and sadly my mum passed away a couple days ago. Damn. I will be back of course, but if you want to restore your faith in humanity, you'll have to look at the comment section. I don't think I've ever commented on a YouTube video on a 10 plus year account. You're the man, Steve. Your videos are such a good, wholesome getaway from life stresses and my own demons. Your candid nature and down to earth personality is what everyone needs. I was gutted when I heard about your loss. Being so open about what you're feeling and perseverance to better times is something I strive for. You're an amazing guy, Steve. Keep it up and hunker down. When life attacks you, you gotta take life on. No better time for a stealth camp than right now, my friends. With camping then also playing a part in the fourth best reputation, Brody from YBS Youngbloods. You might recognize Brody from some of his <laughs> recent oh, mega viral I've seen this shorts, dude. yet he's been making long form content for over eight years now. His videos, usually oh, filmed hell. off the coast of Western Australia, feature him, his family, and his dog Strider doing some oh. kind of beach or ocean related related challenge while capturing some of the most incredible wildlife footage available oh, anywhere. So this has cool. led yeah. to a fair few near-death experiences. Oh, this thing no. right here can kill 26 humans in a couple of minutes. Ooh. Whoa. That was okay, close. Uh, the blue uh, ring octopus just tried to nip the him. Most part, <laughs> that Brody's pretty much focuses on an instant trip to the hospital put on life support hoping he don't die. Yeah, it's you're, well. There's given no given how isolated that. he is in Western Australia, it's basically a death sentence. Probably. It's like they could maybe helicopter him, but like you pretty much, I think you have about thirty minutes to be on life support before you start to have real problems and potentially die. Yeah ocean sustainability and not from a fake virtue signaling sense but rather from the perspective of a dude who genuinely cares about keeping the sea clean wait till you guys see what this actually is you'll be disgusted. Some cool tattoos. plastic it's like a balloon it actually just pisses me off so much the youtube videos clickbaiting ybs youngblood's exposed have a dislike ratio of over 95 percent because there's literally nothing to expose while the comments on these videos state brody is as genuine as a human being can get Doesn't doesn't ask for much but to take care of his <laughs> friends and family and teaches us all not to be greedy and family is everything but if we're on the topic of good-hearted Australians oh, then it's hard to go past laser beam yeah hundred thousand subscribers after only six months on YouTube it was obvious that Lana yeah. was loved from the very beginning <laughs> on top of a positive fun personality laser beam has always valued high quality content over financial gain shown for the first time back in 2017 when he refused to go family friendly even though his entire channel was being demonetized yeah this was the peak of like adpocalypse days basically they told him like yeah you swear too much in your videos you need to make everything kid friendly and he's like yeah fuck that i'm not doing that and basically that's what he did <laughs> basically just said fuck it i'm just gonna keep doing what i do i don't care what people say or think or anything like that yeah and yeah See, Landon has always been someone that, you know, I haven't heard anything negative about him. I I remember, okay, I'm not one of these plebs that's just going to be like, I was there when, before Landon even had like 100,000 stuff. No, I found out about Landon whenever him and, oh God, whenever him and Etika did a, uh, did a, a co-appearance on Achievement Hunter, both of them... Like, him and Etika appeared on there, and I, I gen that was where I found, found both of them, Landon and Etika. And I subscribed to both of them after those Let's Plays, and to see where 
both of their paths went after that, you know, with with Lannon, you know, continuing his ascent and Etika having his meteoric dis- ascent, but then immediately just crashing and burning because of his depression. Mm-hmm. That that fucking sucks, dude. As a matter of fact, hold on, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think it was them playing prop hunt uh, with uh, let's see. Yeah, they did. There it is. It was Object Hunt. Yeah, so. And there, there was some hilarious moments in this where. Uh, oh, wow, that okay. wasn't a prop, huh? I guess I was watching Jeff. That looked real suspicious, Jeff. Yeah, it did. I think something's in here. <laughs> but the whole match, the whole match, Lannon was trying to hunt down Gavin. And kept yelling, fuck the British, because Gavin's British, <laughs> and, and Landon's Australian. He's like, he's like, nah, fuck the British, kill the British! And he's just... <laughs> just <laughs> yes, Holy he's dead, shit. you're a little thin. Oh, you got the him. British. <laughs> there it is. Whoops. Don't let that son of a bitch get away. <laughs> oh my get god. Get out of there, Gavin. <laughs> fuck the British. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's dead. Oh, oh god! Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, yes, Holy he's dead. Shit. You're a little thin, man. Alright, Gavin's dead. That's crazy. No! Oh my god, I have to reload! Oh, where? Where is it? What? Where? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, simpler days. Who's who? That's Etika. Oh, okay. That's Lannon. Laser beam, and then uh, that's Michael, Jeff, and we don't talk about we don't talk about Ryan. We don't talk about Ryan. He's not he's not worth he's not worthy of even a parody of that. What oh. he did was truly just not a good thing. I don't know. I would, I don't even know who that is. Okay, he he took advantage of young fans and did very very bad. Oh things. shit! Yes. 16, well, 17 years old. Yeah, you and he's just blur him out. And he's in his 40s. Oh my god. Yes. Fuck that guy. Piece of shit. Yes. Completely and totally. I had no idea. Oh, not only that. I don't even know. Not only that, that but he's married and has two kids <gasps> and was always seen as like the dad guy. You know, it's like, oh, he's always just such a such a good fatherly presence in these That's in these videos. Horrible. Yeah. Then Holy you get a peek shit. behind the curtain and you see what, what kind of a piece of shit he is. And, but Michael and, and Jeff, I love these two. Michael and his Rage Quit videos. Jeff, uh, a.k.a. Griff from uh, Red vs. Blue, which uh, which Nick knows all about. And I was going to say, he's got probably the... Uh, he's a, a part of the opening of Red vs. Blue, you know. Hey, yeah. You ever wonder why we're here? It's one of the life's great mysteries, isn't it? That, like, that's him. That's that's Jeff. Why are we here in this canyon? That's all this stuff about God. What? Huh? Want to talk about it? Nope. <laughs> but, yeah, Etika, right? I miss this, man. I miss peak Etika just having fun and not, and just not being, not being depressed, man. Fuck depression, man. What are you doing? <laughs> I enjoy swearing. It's who I am. I'm not going to change for money. <coughs> I do what makes me happy. That's the way I'm going to do YouTube. That's why I got into it. Laserbeam was so committed to keeping the content real, then he moved back in with his parents just so he could keep swearing. I was like... <laughs> No. His mom looks less than thrilled about the. No. Kate, what would my mom do if I had to move back in? <laughs> She'd kill me. <laughs> she would literally kill me. She would. 
Yeah. Although you be living the good life, cause she's got a freaking in-ground pool and all kind of big screen TV. And no, all kinds I, of shit. I couldn't do that to her. I know. I would live. She I would, would not. Okay. First of all, I would she'd live be in like, a shed. Okay, what, would, what's going on that you have to move back home? And then she would help you. But. I guess, but. But, you're. You're actually b buying, I mean, you know. If I'm paying for my own stuff, they'll tolerate me. But if I'm there for like an X amount of time and I haven't moved out, they'll You've kill me. You've done that before and she almost killed you, so. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that's because back then I was a piece of shit. Yeah. Back then, like around 24, you know, 23, 24, I was a piece of shit. I'm not going to lie. And it, she would not be very happy. <laughs> I know she wouldn't. <laughs> she, she likes having her her house to herself. And that's yeah. I don't want <laughs> with her cats. I don't want to intrude on that. Yeah. <laughs> Making enough to cover like the basic bills, but I moved back with my parents while blaming nobody but himself throughout the process. And it's completely fair. It's my mistakes. Shit happens. Like a true legend, stays himself and sticks to his guns in the face of adversity. Laserbum, you are a true bloody legend of all bloody legends. In line with staying true to himself, Laserbeam is also connected with the audience by sharing his own mental health struggles. I have absolutely no shame with like anything I'm going through. I know I've always battled anxiety. I have anxiety about everything. The last few weeks I've been convincing myself I'm dying. With his extreme transparency likely playing a role in the absence of any negative press despite the size of his channel. Although even then, he doesn't come close to Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce, here. almost 15 years on the platform, <laughs> the only crime Vsauce has ever committed is not uploading more often. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who these people are. Well, the Vsauce is... Easily. That outfit, though. No, I know. <laughs> it was cool. Well, but Vsauce, you know, Michael from Vsauce, Vsauce has been around for so long. I mean, I remember when YouTube started, like 2007, mm -hmm. 2008, mm -hmm. and they were right there. They were like one of the first true, uh, like, science YouTube channels that actually gave a shit and actually put a shit ton of production into their stuff. Mm -hmm. And they've stayed consistent. And I know that it's just like, well, nine months, it's like they're not regular on uploads. Like, yeah. But that's the thing. They don't have to be. Every time they release a new one, people are going to come back. Yeah. Because people remember, hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Even then, his content from 10 years ago is still extremely popular, being a testament to his strong image, given reputation and resistance to atrophy almost always go hand in hand. Vsauce seems very comfortable in his own skin as a genuinely humble, curious, down-to-earth guy who's committed to keeping a clean, successful brand, steering away from even the most basic controversial questions. Michael, are you a tits or an ass man in the end? Because we did never get yes. an answer on that. <laughs> I ask myself that every day. Really? <laughs> and do you, do you ever find resolve within your soul on that issue? Yeah. Which is the answer? You're a corn man. I'm a corn man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not love that? I just... Hey, man. <laughs> Corn's pretty delicious. But if Ethan were to ask me that, I would just be like, Ethan, it's a very personal question, and I don't really feel comfortable answering that. I mean, there's this, this podcast is going out to a lot of people. And I just don't think it's like, I just don't think it's the right question to ask. <laughs> but to answer it, the answer is yes. Yes to what? Yes. That's also, it. Also, I'm a thigh, man. I really don't care who knows it same time Vsauce doesn't shy away from important risk whether that be trying shorts or putting <clears> back <throat> in his curiosity box which hey. just by the by was purchased by Mel Science in August 2022 that. for 12 million dollars however given its size and footprint Dude, there's perfect. one more channel that's maintained its reputation also also they made him look they made him uh like almost uh, cross-eyed <laughs> well they made him like uh what's the they made him like Shawn Michaels. It's like, oh. it's like this. It's like, it's, it's like, oh, yeah. 
competition better than any other on the platform. Other Dude, perfect. Little derby. With five different hosts, tons of moving parts, and close to 60 Woo! million subscribers, Dude Perfect should be a magnet for criticism. However, it seems their most controversial moment was in 2022, when all they did was film a video in Qatar during the World Cup. Articles on the incident failed to discredit them, as they'd accidentally highlight Dude Perfect's morality in rejecting sponsorship opportunities from alcohol companies. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? If that's their prerogative, then that's their prerogative. Plus, most of their audience is kids. Yeah. So why the hell would they need alcohol sponsorships? Mm -hmm. Plus, they make enough money. Dude, these guys have made so much money off YouTube, they bought their own compound and like made like a trick shot haven in Texas. That's cool. That's how rich these guys are. Also, they came to Bristol and I missed out on the opportunity to, to see them. I was like, damn. So close. On top of this, the group is known for being extremely charitable, with Make-A-Wish video editions, a pledge to sponsor one child for every 100,000 views they get, and their own Dude Perfect Hope Foundation, which strives to bring hope to people all over the world, struggling with illness or lacking life's basics, like food and clean water. There were accusations in the early days that their videos weren't authentic, with a Telegraph article from 2009 creating such a heated debate about the channel's legitimacy that Good Morning America hired an expert to investigate are they real? Are they fake? We have computer analysts looking at them. Yet video experts say that they're unable to tell where edits have been made. Dude Perfect responded by stating, We love it when people say it's fake because it makes the shot seem even more ridiculously impossible. And we get more publicity and hits on YouTube, so we love the mystery of knowing whether it's real or fake, with frontman Tyler Tony echoing a similar sentiment. It used to bug all of us when people would say the shots are fake, they're not real. We just kind of took it as a compliment to how impressive the things that we were doing actually were. The Dude Perfect members simply reinforce a point we brought up earlier. An uncontroversial life outside of YouTube creates an uncontroversial life inside of YouTube. Yeah, I mean, like, watching other trick shot channels and their behind the scenes and stuff, it's like, yeah, the stuff's not impossible. Like, it just, just takes editing, a lot of time. It just takes a ridiculous amount of patience. Yeah. And I know that, uh, see, how ridiculous, they're sort of like the Australian version of a uh, of dude perfect and and i'll say this it, it trick shot channels like that i mean i love i love the idea of just like just trick shots just people just spending all that time trying to make it and i'm like how in the hell sorry oh, she no, yawned i'm listening no she's that licking, was just so cute she's licking his hand why are you licking my hand? She's like, she's like, num, 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 num. What are you doing? Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 She's cleaning herself. <laughs> there she goes. Wow. I knew it. Wow. What a cute girl. What a cute little baby. Oh, goodness. It's okay, baby. You got her moon in the camera right now. Yeah. <laughs> she's Put just your like, butt down. She's just like blaring her, her booty to everybody. Ugh. So, honestly, I don't, I don't know, like, in terms of reputation, I know reaction channels don't have the best reputation. Thanks, thanks, Jinx, CJ is so cool, SS Sniper Wolf, and all you other hacks out there that basically <clears throat> give all reaction channels a bad name but oh well it is what it is I guess so a lot of these channels I've been aware of for a very long time some of them I haven't been aware of uh, but yeah the I mean honestly that a good reputation is something that I think once you get it it's hard to maintain but it's a good thing to maintain, you know? It. Or you could always just take the approach of, I don't give a damn about my bad reputation. Ba -na 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 -na. Yeah. Could be like Joan Jet, but, you know, of course, I, I lack a vagina, so. <laughs> and also. Exactly like her, yeah. plus, plus, I think I'm a better guitar player than her. Damn. 
She admits that she's not that good on guitar. Now, Lita Ford, I will never... I don't stand a snowball's chance in hell against Lita Ford. Lita Ford is a god on guitar. I'm never going to say I'm better than her, ever. I'm trying to make a heart on her back. It's it's working. I see it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. But yeah, what do y'all think about online reputations? Who's a YouTuber that was not mentioned in this that you think has a really good reputation? I mean, let us know. But uh, anyway, Markiplier has a pretty good reputation. I think so too. So does Jacksepticeye. I would also say the Hacksmith. The Hacksmith also has a really good reputation. But, alright. Anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. Till next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I'm Nick. This is Clyde. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.